This brings us to our third and final way of how we're going to solve systems of equations in this course, and this is using Cramer's rule. And again, this is probably my favorite and a lot of students' favorite just because it's super easy to do. It's really hard to make a mistake, whereas when we do either of the other methods, there's a lot of places to make mistakes because there's so many fractions. So let's take a look at how we do this with Cramer's rule. Cramer's rule has everything to do with determinants. And essentially, we're basically going to find three determinants. And the way that we find them is we're first going to take just the coefficient matrix. And we're going to find the determinant of that. So just the coefficients like we normally do. Then we're going to write a new matrix. And I'm going to replace the x's with whatever the constants are over here. So notice instead of a1, a2, b1, b2, I have c's replacing the a's. And then I'm going to find the determinant of that. And then for the y's, I'm doing the same thing. I'm replacing the y column with the constant column. So this was my x's, this was my constants. And then I'm going to find the determinant of that. So what do I do with all of that? To find the x value of my solution, I'm taking the determinant of, sorry, the, that was wrong, this determinant, the determinant of x, divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix. And then for y, I'm taking the determinant of the y matrix divided by the determinant of the coefficient matrix, which is a lot of words right now until we actually do it. So let's do it. So here's my first equation, um, and it's not written as a matrix equation or a matrix at all. And essentially what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find x and I'm going to find y. And some people do it in different ways. They'll find all three determinants first, which is fine. Um, or you can show it like this. So I'm going to do one each way just so you can see. If I'm doing the first way, whoops, I'm going to use a different color there. Then on top, remember this is going to be the determinant of the x matrix. And on the bottom is going to be just my normal determinant. So that's going to, this one on the bottom is 3, negative 5, 12, 3. And on the top, this negative 5 and 3 stay the same, but the x, the 3 and the 12 get replaced by 7 and 5. And now I'm just going to do the determinants. The numerator is 21 minus negative 25. The denominator is 9 minus negative 60. So that gives me 46 over 69, which should reduce, hopefully. Um, I think I can take a 23 out of both. So that's 2 thirds. So my x answer is 2 thirds. The y solution, again, the denominator will be the exact same thing. The numerator is that the x column will be the same, whoops, 3, 12, but the y column is now replaced by the 7, 5. So here I've already discovered that this is 69. I'm not going to show that work again. Here I get 15 minus um, 84. And 15 minus 84 is negative 69. And negative 69 divided by 69 is negative 1. So my solution, oops, my solution is 2 thirds comma negative 1. Again, you can always take the time to plug that answer back in to make sure that it's correct. So let's take a look at another example, and this time I'm going to show the work differently. This is how most of my students show their work, which is just fine. I'm going to find all three determinants, and then I'm going to use those determinants to plug them back in to find x and y. So to find the first determinant, remember that's just the coefficient matrix, 4, 5, negative 4, negative 2. I'm going to cross multiply to get negative 8 minus negative 20. Negative 8 minus negative 20 gives me positive 12. Then I'm going to find dx. So remember, the 5, negative 2 stays the same, but the x column 
gets replaced with negative 3, positive 6. Then I do the same thing. I just find the determinant. That's positive 6 minus 30, which is negative 24. Lastly, the x column for this one stays like the original x column, but the y column gets replaced by negative 3, 6. Then I cross multiply 24 minus positive 12, which gives me 12. From here, I'm now going to find x. Remember, x is the x um, determinant, negative 24, divided by d. So actually, let's write that just so we remember. This is determinant of x over the determinant. So that is negative 24 over 12, which is negative 2. And then for y, we're finding the determinant of y over d. Determinant of y was 12. d was 12, which gives me 1. Don't forget, just because you're showing work like this, my answer is still an ordered pair. So write my ordered pair as negative 2, 1. Last one for you to try on your own. So go ahead and press pause, try this question, show work either way that we showed it but together, then press play to see how you did. I'm going to show it this way again to find d, dx, and dy. d would be 3, negative 4, negative 5, 6. That gives me 18 minus 20. 18 minus 20 is negative 2. For the x, the y column remains the same, and for the y, the x column remains the same. And then for the x, I'm replacing x with 9, 2, and for the y, I'm replacing y with 9, 2. Now I'm going to find those determinants. 9 times 6, 54, minus negative 8. That gives me um, plus positive, which is 62. And then 6 minus negative 45, so I'm actually adding 45. 6 plus 45 is 51. So now to find my x and my y. Remember my x is dx over d. So that's 62 divided by negative 2, which gives me negative 31. And then to find my y, it's dy over d. So this is 51 divided by negative 2, which is negative 25.5. So my final solution, oops, negative 31 comma negative 25.5. If you're ever unsure, like we have a decimal and we have numbers that are very large, remember I can always take the x and y and plug it back into either equation or both equations to make sure they work, or I can get my Desmos graphing calculator out, graph those two, and make sure that they do in fact cross at negative 31 comma negative 25.5.